Hey guys, this is Dimitri49 with Product Feedback bringing you the full review of the GTX 570 from Asus. Now, I will talk about first the disadvantage of the card, some of the cons that I don't like about the card, and then we'll finish up on a positive note and talk about the benchmarking. I'll show you some of the graphs that I did with this card, benchmarking some um, games and uh, other benchmarks. So right off the bat, uh, because this is a triple slot design cooler, uh, the card uh, is very large, so if you are planning on SLIing this card with another card or even a triple SLI card, you are limited to the motherboard that you have and also to the case. And obviously because this is a triple slot card, if you are going to SLI this card, you will have you will cover six slots on your board and that is not a very good thing because it will cover up all the slots that you can possibly use uh, put in your, your sound card or any other device that you wish to use on the motherboard will be covered up. Uh, okay, so next thing is that uh, taking off the backplate requires you to take off the cooler first. And that's because you have screws here which you cannot access unless you take off the cooler. So in case you need to take off the backplate, that is something to consider. Overclocking this card can only be done with the software provided, which is the ASUS Smart Doctor. You cannot overclock this card with MSI Afterburner because the PCB is not referenced, which means the MSI Afterburner will not recognize the voltage tweakability for this card and you won't be able to get the full potential out of this card unless you overclock it with Smart Doctor and uh, the software, I don't really like it. I prefer to use MSI Afterburner, but in this case you cannot. And the last negative thing about this card, I would say is that it is 11 and a half inches long versus the uh, 10 and a half inches long versus the reference so it's one inch longer than your reference design card and it does require a little bit more power it does have one eight pin and one six pin connections as you can see here and that is something to consider as well uh, what, right off the bat I want to say that a lot of people are saying that this card is heavy and a lot of questions are regarding the, the weight of this card and if it has any potential in damaging your motherboard and I would say it does not so you don't need to worry about that obviously if you are shipping your system and you rather take off the card because you know during shipment anything could happen but if you're just installing the card inside your case you should not worry about it bending your motherboard uh, obviously because they designed this card to not do that so one of the really good advantages about the card is that it looks amazing Installing this card in, inside your case will give you the advantage of having an all-around black card with some really cool design on the front like the, the nice red uh, strips, the fans, uh, the top of the card as well. And obviously the backplate which is some possibly the selling point of the card as you can see it looks really good. Installing this inside your case will make uh, your rig look amazing uh, and obviously the uh, backplate does provide additional cooling for the PCB but the main point is it covers up the PCB and gives us a nice really cool custom made backplate from ASUS. Obviously one of the selling points of this card is its massive cooler and I gotta tell you guys this card cools so well I do not have to worry about increasing the fan speed over 30% and I will show you the benchmarking that I did in the later in the review so please stick around but one of the things is that it uses five heat pipes which actually connect to the uh, processor on the card and two heat pipes exhaust uh, two heat pipes enter this heatsink and two heat pipes uh, three heat pipes enter this heatsink so there's more heat coming away from the uh, from the processor uh, because this heatsink is positioned a little bit further away from the actual processor and gets more cooling done uh, through through these fans Now talking about the fans these fans are extremely quiet They never exceeded 30% like I said during benchmarking and you cannot tell the card is working unless you really put your ear to it Because of this cooler you can do an amazing overclock I have reached a 900 megahertz overclock on the core which is a simply outstanding overclock for GTX 570 and you again like you said you do not have to worry about uh, any noise levels or cooling in this card because the cooling is just simply outstanding. And one more advantage of this card is as you can see it has full HDMI and full DisplayPort connectivity, uh, dual DVI and that's an advantage for all those using those uh, full HDMI or DisplayPort uh, to connect this card to their monitors. One more thing to mention before I move on to the benchmarking and my final conclusion is that as you can see this is a, a heatsink for your RAM, which I don't believe 
uh, reference design have and that allows you to overclock the RAM and not worry about it breaking. Uh, and one more thing to mention is that the components used on this card are extremely uh, durable so overclocking this card should be no sweat and that's what ASUS has done with this card. This, they made this card to be an overclocking monster just a monstrous card that you can overclock and not worry about it breaking or heating or uh, you know just breaking the card while running an extreme overclock. So my final conclusion on this card is that if you are looking to an upgrade and you are looking for only one card setup I would definitely suggest the GTX 570. Obviously this card has some advantages over other 570s um, but if you are looking to SLI these cards then go somewhere else. If you are looking to get only one card then this is definitely one of the options because uh, it has an excellent cooling, amazing overclocks. It got backplate, which is comes with the card. You don't have to purchase it separately. And one thing to mention about the cooler is that the air is exhausted through the top, so you will have all this air heating up your uh, inside your case. I found it through my benchmarking that the air was bumping into my side panel, and the side panel actually got hot. So I would recommend having some fans installed in your case to exhaust all air out and potentially uh, fans on the side panel to exhaust or all the air that comes up from the top of the card. This is the best price performance ratio in my opinion uh, because you know you can get really good results with this and not going any further like the 580 or 590 uh, because those cards are quite over, overpriced and they're not uh, for the budget consumer uh, but if you are looking to spend a little more than the 560 uh, the GTX 560, this card really does perform well and uh, does give you really good value for the money. One thing to mention before we go and check out the benchmarks is that the cooler does bend just a little bit like this, as you can see I'm pressing it um, and that has that's something to think about uh, but you know it, it's not a big issue, just want to mention that so you guys know all the things about this card that I have experienced. So let's go ahead and check out some of the uh, benchmarking scores that I did. Thirty percent. Forty percent. Fifty percent. Sixty percent. All right, benchmarking time. As you can see, I am using the latest drivers from NVIDIA. I have overclocking this card with Smart Doctor Utility, which is provided with the card, like I mentioned earlier. This is the first stock configuration. I'm using, using GPU ID to prove that. And a 930 megahertz, an incredible overclock with, with this card. Uh, you can pause the video at any time to check out the score, but basically I am comparing the EVGA GTX 570, which I did recently review about a couple months ago, and this card. So the two cards are fairly similar in terms of performance. One is obviously that the GTX 570 from Asus is much quieter and is much more cooler than the EVGA uh, version. And that is, of course, because the ASUS has this massive cooler, it has better fans, and it's just mu much bigger heatsink than the EGA version. Uh, and, of course, here we have the temperatures for the GTX 570 from ASUS. The card was never exceeded 74 degrees throughout my entire benchmarking process. This was monitored with MSI Afterburner, and the fan was set on auto. Uh, to for all the benchmarking so uh, this is an incredible incredible results for 74 degrees on this card uh, versus the EVGA I'm sorry I don't have any results but it the uh, EVGA did get in uh, mid 80s and this is the fan speed uh, which was set on auto and the fan speed never exceeded 30 as you can see the average load for that card was about 28 percent for the entire uh, for the entire benchmarking and gaming process 
And overall, this card has performed so well. I am so impressed with this card because of how cool it went, how uh, there was no noise coming from it unless I bump up the speed to 50%. And obviously, if you do that, you will get much better cooling. I did drop 10 degrees if I increased the fan speed to 50%, which is very good results. Now, the question is, is this card worth it versus other GTX 570s that might be cheaper? And obviously you get a much better cooling, you get a much quieter performance and you get a backplate. So this is the only three things that you have to consider when purchasing a GTX 570. And uh, you have to consider taking the fact that this card is much larger and you can only overclock it with Smart Doctor Utility. But that is for now. I really enjoyed this card. I would highly recommend it. Uh, if you guys have any questions about it, please leave in the comments below. And the question of the day today is... If you are to purchase a card, what would be your next purchase in terms of graphics card? Thank you guys for watching. This has been Dimitri49 with Product Feedback. Please stay tuned for more and subscribe. To be updated on the latest Product Feedback videos, make sure that you have subscribed.